Tunnel Surfer Two by Scott Maddox. There is no one. Let's start on first page, shall we? Do not believe you understand what is going on. It was just past noon, October 13th, 2023, when the world ended. It was just past noon, October 13th, 2023, when the world began. I aged 26 years in that moment, and I was a lucky Ferland looked at the smiling, bearded faces of her pansy bed. With a satisfied grunt, she ripped all the plants out and threw them onto the pavement. Damned hippies, she muttered, before going back inside to make PB&J sandwiches. Warren, and I say, I have been patient, but this must be the last time. Warren turns slowly to face me. His face is like scarred marble, the steps of a mansion that have survived a war, and his glare of pure hatred would have chilled me had I not seen it so often before. I promise you will never have to deal with me again, he pronounced. I waited for the scent of a lime inexplicably wafted through the garage, tainting the clean, masculine scent of grease, gas. The surprise away thing was the sound. Breaking bones sound exactly like potato chips in your head. Martin made a mental note to write that down when Will stopped screaming and he could hear himself Deep thinking. Inside the watermelon, Howard wriggled his fingers with glee. Vincent knew what it was like to be a god. He lay back, the distant sounds of the city fading, until all he could hear was the ticking of his grandmother's clock. Slowly, an image formed in his mind of a pagoda and a fox-headed woman smiling at him. So you return, she said in a voice like warmed honey. I have, he rumbled, flexing his arms before him. I am glad. The village the breeze blowing from the direction of the stream, and Tom could smell the mossy rocks from where he sat, dreaming, against a stone wall older than his grandparents. The stone sphere hung in mid-air, turning slowly as if floating in an eddy invisible and intangible to the humans present. There it is, said Dorian, the big gray ball. It's sort of a greenish gray, said Evantrude. Are you sure this is the right one? More to the point, said Lavinda. What the fuck Venus, are we going to He said with a sniff. It's my least favorite planet. It's so... God, uh, somebody keyed my car! Wait, Leonard. Those scratches are an ancient Celtic alphabet called Aum. What? Let me see. It spells L-E-O-N-A-R-D-I-S-A-D-I-C. Leonard is a dick! What the hell? Thought John, as the sunlight filtered through branches and leaves formed shifting patterns on his outstretched legs. It was the most peaceful he had felt since quitting his job and hitchhiking to his old stomping grounds in Maine. If I only had some moxie. Suddenly, the pattern of dappled shadow shifted, and a large dark shape hurtled toward him was crowded with the sort of patrons Judy hated. Hip, well-dressed, pretentious. They sipped micro-brews and listened to indie rock on the jukebox. God damn it, that one's even raising his motherfucking pinky. Get out, she yelled, bowling into the pub like a matted steer. Get out! It's my goddamn bar, you bunch of fucking preppy oh, The music always makes me horny, she purred. I laughed and threw my drink in her lap. Easy there, tiger, I said. You, she fumed, you goddamn Lady cop. Blue walked past me, spine erect, eyes straight ahead. I imagine a finishing school matron pounding a staff on the ground, crying, You'll never find a man if you slouch. I catch her eye as she turns the corner. She smiles, and I know she's... The landlord strode in like he owned the place. Fab Glitter strode in like he owned the place. He twitched the hem of his cloak just a hair, and it rose and flowed behind him like a contrail. You all know who I am, he said. But who the hell are all of you? teetered, and, overbalanced by an errant breeze, succumbed to nature, collapsed into a chaotic heap on the floor. Unimpressed, Mr. Puff Puff and Whiskins the Elder merely found the mess to be more attractive than their poorly kept litter box. A key rattled in the door. Everybody Slipped for my favorite pair of jeans. Old, worn, soft, faded winter sky blue. They are still warm from the dryer. My balls slide out of the hole in the crotch and plop onto my seat, reminding me of why I don't wear these shoes but urgently. Harold, stop a minute! I think I hear a prowler! Harold paused in mid-thrust, a drop of sweat glinting from his chin before falling weightlessly onto Mildred's heaving bosom. Cold, she what? sniffed wiping her nose and pulling her coat more tightly around herself. I was oblivious, though. The smell of damp mittens, melting snow on our shoulders, and the piney scent of needles that we crushed as we tramped through the woods reminded me of childhood sledding parties, hot cocoa, and my friend strode to the front of the room. I don't expect any of you to understand a single word I am saying, 
he said. The esoteric mysteries are beyond the ken of ordinary minds. The pig grunted and shuffled, watching hopefully for the possibility of mine. just as Luke Skywalker was meeting Yoda that I felt his hand slip onto my lap, questing, and I knew that my suspicions were correct. I forced my box of jujubes into his hand and made my way to the aisle, mumbling something about needing to go to the bathroom. Outside it was raining, and I was grateful. When the weather matches my mood, it always gives me a sense of rightness. Fuck! They're coming around the back of the house, I said. We need to be ready. Ready? All we have is a shovel and a phone book. Have you ever been hit in the head with a phone book, I asked? In a moment, we heard their footsteps. The undead were afoot tonight, just as Margie had predicted, just as Father Flynn had assured us was not possible. There were two of them. One of them was my mother. I rushed forward, phone book raised, brought the spine of it smartly down onto her head. Jim, meanwhile, seemed to be having trouble wielding a garden spade. The head, I yelled, as Mother crumpled to the ground, that hopeful look still on her face. In between seconds we hung, expectant, glittering, droplets on cobwebs. Brian's cough spun out until all we could hear was one pure note, a song in the of old rubber bands and tinned ham. I looked at my mom. She was carefully ignoring my discomfort. Aha! Visitors, came a voice from behind a stack of men. Get him, she screamed, pumping her fat fists in the chill November air, her breath circling her head like pipe smoke. Down on the field, her son looked up into the stands, embarrassed, and was immediately tackled from the corn theater open for business promptly at 9 a.m. every morning. Mildred made a pot of tea and settled into her crocheting, and was generally left to herself for a few hours before the first wary customer would shuffle in, request a token, and head to the back room. Booth number nine was the one though none of the patrons knew that particular naughty vixen was the same woman who had given them their coin. They never would have believed. Nice day. Thanks. Well, I never, she screamed, and slammed out of my life. Bits of plaster rained down and stuck in my hair. It wasn't true. She really had. But I guess maybe she couldn't remember. Not that it mattered anymore. The heavy jazz from next door suddenly went up in volume, and I found myself on the floor, my head throbbing, a syncopated bass line, a viscous puddle dampening my knees. Not that it mattered. I came here to get away from the street thugs and hustlers of my old neighborhood. I expected peace and tranquility. I expected boredom. I expected to be left alone. But here I was, a green-skinned ogre on my doorstep, demanding protection money like a common hood. I tried to remember if they were weak against iron or silver or garlic. I'm sorry, I said. John's not at home. He'll have to come back in the morning. Oh, he grunted. Excuse me. I remembered the ogre's weakness. They're dumb as a bag form of cake bed. Form, form, form. We all listened. This was what we had come to hear. It all starts with breasts, he said. He wears his hair like a wig, his clothes like a disguise. He bought a magazine and moved on, but the image remains, an empty disguise of a man, perhaps born that way, perhaps created, or perhaps an artifact, an accidental scrap of flotsam tossed up by an eddy in the currents of existence. You may laugh, but I know such things are possible, and not all of them are as insipid as the disguise man that buys butt corn from our shop every Thursday at 2.30. Just outside the doorway, the summer heat enveloped him like an overcoat, heavy, warm. The last Friday of the month, and the line of men at the teller's window were a tableau begging to be titled Blue Collar Payday. Perhaps a Johnny Cash song should be playing, not the tinny classical being piped in through dusty speaker grills in the settling silence. Not so much quiet as expectant as if it knew that it was merely stage dressing for some dramatic entrance, scene, and exit. After a moment, a breaking twig heralded the beginning, and the fairy procession strode in, accompanied by birdsong and trumpets, and a small child was discovered beneath a flowering bower. The girl was from Floxenau City, but that wasn't important. End part one. Turn the record over for part two. Moot.